Hi, everybody. Recruiting Animal here on, what's the day today? The 16th, Andrew? Yep. yep. 16th of June, 2021. Okay. My guest today, I don't have to introduce anybody else right now. Nobody else is here. He's got two names. His name is, oh, hold on a second. On, the, on my Facebook group, it's, it's Andrew Bass, B-A-S. But his real name is, hold on one sec. I'm going to get it here. Wait a second. It's uh, uh, Vaskakov. Well, hold on. I can't find yeah. it. Yeah, Vaskakov. So like, isn't that, uh, we were talking about diversity issues. Some people would say that you are uh, compromising to the Anglosphere uh, because we're so chauvinist. Uh, we, you, you're made, you shortened your name. Uh, do you feel like you're being disrespected and you have to compromise with uh, the oppression of the English language? Uh, why did you shorten your name? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, like my surname uh, is Baskakov, but uh, friends call me Bas, even Ukrainian friends. So I cannot say that that's a disrespectful ap approach to me. That uh -huh. Bas is more like a Nick nickname. Okay. Okay. So, I, I, I think it's smart. I think it's smart, but you know, people say that I'm not fair. Okay. And and <laughs> Andy, ba and also you spell Andrew in. Uh, your language, A-N-D-R-I-Y, but I notice yeah. on LinkedIn, you spell it the English style and you don't feel that uh, a degrading compromise. Am I right about that? Yeah, it, it, it helps in outreaching other recruiters from, mm -hmm. from other countries. Okay, to, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> English just happens to be the international language. If it was 2000 years ago, we'd be speaking Greek, okay? Exactly. Uh, even though it was the Roman Empire, in power, I'm sorry of the history lesson, everybody, but you know, we would be speaking Greek. That was the lingua franca, okay? So Andy Bass, he's, uh, you know, cause I posted, there's all kinds of articles online about name bias, right? Uh, anyway, so I find it intriguing. Uh, introductory, again, stuff that's intriguing for me. Uh, you have a PhD in economics. Uh, has yeah. that helped you in business in any way that you can actually remember uh, and give us an example. And if it's the answer is no, just say no, okay? Don't waste my time. Okay, so uh, yes, it helped on one point that uh, I started looking deeper into different situations in terms of like starting analyzing processes more deeper. And uh, my, remember my, what I told you? I gave I, the guy a lecture before we started. I say, I uh, like examples. Gotcha, I don't gotcha. like generalities. I don't like okay. when you blab and we don't know what you're talking about. Thank God I see Michael G. Cox showed up here, the gotcha. sales recruiter. Dot com, okay, and he can tell you that's what I like. Can you think of one example where your economics degree, your big brain, actually helped you make money? Okay, did it say, Hey, Andy, go into this business? I have special skills to uh, analyze the world economy, I know where I can make money. Yes or no? Can you give me an example? I move on. I got lots of questions. I don't have to waste my time with this stupidity, okay? Gotcha. Okay, yes. Nice is yes. The whole point in the PhD was uh, done without, uh, within a model that is called the spectral analysis approach. What does this mean? It means that you have some... Did you listen to me? Oh, forget happening. it. Okay. Okay. Also, okay. Never mind. Also, yeah. You also it helps me. Yes. Yes. It helps me, Mr. Recruiting yeah. Okay. It helped him, but he, but he <laughs> yeah. can't say how. Okay. It helped him, but he can't say how. Okay. Can you imagine going to an interview? You ask him a question, and he just drags it out like that. You fall asleep, and you say, "Forget about this guy." And he could be smart, right? But he just doesn't know how to tell ordinary people what he's doing or how he profited from it. So it there's helps a me. Okay. For okay. You. Okay. I have a short version. It helped me in recruitment analytics, dot, period. Okay, that means nothing, everybody. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you wanted the short answer, come on. Uh, okay, okay. But here's the other thing. He took a negotiation course, but he made it sound fancy. I took it at the Lung London School of Economics, okay? So let me ask you, since I consider negotiation courses, I've read the book, so it never helped me. Uh, can you think of one instance where your negotiation course actually helped you. You say yes. no if you want to, okay? Remember, I just taught you a lesson. Don't waste I'll say time. yes all the time. 
Okay. So, uh, in, in my case, I was very pushy in negotiations. After this course, I started uh, under, uh, thinking how I can uh, take a win-win position in a conversation. I, because I was very straightforward, I was very pushy, and especially like for people uh, from other regions, like from Central Europe and from the U.S., from Canada, it I may may have sound very pushy, very. Um, Give me an example of sounding pushy. Can you remember one time you sounded pushy? I'd like to know what sounding pushy is. Okay. Obviously, I don't know. Like uh, if I do not give you some other option, I only want to reach the goal that I have set, and I don't care what what you think about it. So like I'm trying to sell you something, and I'm just I cannot. Uh, take no as an answer so i'm pretty pushy that's 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 the case the, michael g cox does that sound like pushy or just like narrow-minded he does he can't realize that there's different trade-offs tomato tomato you're, he, he's he thinks he was being pushy because he was trying to push an individual into just the one option pushy yeah. is not when you Thank just you. <laughs> offer one option it's when you're rude okay uh, that's that's what pushy means. No, you need to do Semantics. this. This is good for you. Hey, hey, come on! Don't you know that? That's pushy, okay? Or what are you, an idiot? That's pushy. <laughs> that's pushy. Yeah. Okay. So my guess is you didn't learn that much uh, at at the London School. Did you take it online, or did you actually go to London? No, I, I actually went there. Just so you could put the London school on your on your resume, is that why? Uh, they, they must have the exact same kind of negotiation courses everywhere in the world. Why? Maybe, go there? maybe. I have a special certificate. I actually thought I was uh, going there for a master's degree, mm. but at some point I just changed my mind. Okay. Okay. Now we get to the time that you've been waiting for. You came on the show, I'm sure, to plug your business. So you got two businesses. One is New Work, N U W O R K. Uh, dot M E, and it uh, hold, hold on, hold on. Read all that again. New work, <laughs> new work. You should get it with your stupid company name, Zagwork. This, <laughs> <laughs> this is new work. N U W O R K. Dot M E slash E N. If you want to be able to read it, you don't want to read. <laughs> you don't want to read Ukrainian. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, what about that song, Honky Cat? Right? <laughs> That's what it makes me think of. You know the Elton John song? No. I won't sing it, because if I sing it, Facebook's going to recognize the tune. And when I try to upload, <laughs> no, it's no, happening it, to me. It's because if you sing it, we all have to mute you. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, go ahead and sing it. Ready? No, go. no, don't sing it. No, Facebook won't let me post this thing, okay? Although Michael G. Cox... Michael G. Cox, in, in, Bob, case, in case you get the song right, if you don't get the song right, if you do it in your own okay. manner. <laughs> I just uh, hummed a few lines before and it, it, it blocked me on another show. But Michael G. Cox took some time out of his lunch hour on Friday to teach me how to use his video editor and I bought it. Okay, so uh, now hopefully I can actually uh, should have told me I would have let you use mine. But uh, now, uh, well, as a team member, maybe, uh, but now I can, I can edit the shows. And not only that, if I can't figure it out still, I can call Michael G. Cox and waste his time. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So where are we? Let me see. What, uh, new work automates the screening of entry level retail hospitality, uh, retail and hospitality, uh, entry level retail and hospitality job applicants using a yeah. proprietary system to line up the right applicants with the right employers uh, and makes the review quick and easy. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> Remember well, uh, yeah. how I told you to talk. Okay, uh, basically this is a recruitment applicant tracking system for entry-level job positions in the retail, in the logistics sphere, in transportation, and also in the FNB. But FNB isn't working at the moment properly in the Ukraine. It's so. an interesting term. I learned something today. Uh, okay. You guys don't use the term in Europe, hospitality uh, industry. You use horeca, hotel, horeca. Yeah. restaurant, and catering, horeca. Yeah. Have you ever heard that, uh, Michael G. Cox, before? No, but I, 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 don't, oh, I don't do any work in that yeah, no, no. I, well, come on, where you're reading it? You're 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 on Facebook. You're reading all this recruiting stuff. You would have heard it, but we don't use it here. Horica. 
it sounds like horrible. Okay. So, okay. So what's so good about what, what, what does your new work do? What does new work do? N U W O R K dot M E everybody. What does it do? You know what hey, he told me before? An animal. Have you ever heard of Tola? No. See, and it's a little closer than Europe, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. <laughs> It's not Hola. much closer than no. It's not much closer than Europe. Okay, but not only that. You know what this guy told me before the show started? He said I no, watched I don't. your last. He said I watched your last week's show and I thought it was a paid advertisement for resume sim. Okay, because you know, we talked. About it. <laughs> Actually, it was not a paid advertisement. No, no money was exchanged. No, no, here. it wasn't paid. We don't make any money. <laughs> but, okay. but, but, but it should be. <laughs> okay. Okay, so new work. Take your money. Pretend you're doing a good ad for it in the next uh, 30 seconds. What is, why is it good? What does it do? I don't understand. We, we specialize only on the retail sphere at the moment. Transportation yeah, yeah, sphere. we know that already. I made a big deal about it, it's okay? tailored, tailored, tailored to the processes for entry-level job positions, especially to these uh, particular spheres. I mean, the, these are the spheres where the candidates don't have a... TV, they don't have any resume or something. They just need the job and they need to be prescreened very fastly and they need to be fa fastly replied whether they fit or not to their organization. Because time in this case is very important. And our system does the prescreening phase through the chatbot, through uh, online application form very fastly and the recruiter immediately gets all you know the results. What? We don't say fastly, we just say fast, okay? okay? Fast, fast, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you said, oh, so what do you got? They've got to fill out. They don't have a resume. Are these no. like uh, alcoholics and drug addicts who just want to work one day to make some cash, or are they students? What kind of people are these? The, it depends. Some, sometimes that's uh, in some cases it's the people you described because there's a specific job. It's not uh, a taboo term. Okay. So let's say yeah. you've got that uh, <laughs> daily labor kind of person doesn't have a resume. They've got access to the internet and they're going to fill out a, a screening uh, for how long does it take to fill out the screening form? Uh, usually up to three minutes. Like if we take uh, four to five questions that are relevant to a specific uh, job position, like okay. uh, operator at the gas station, like there's three, five questions that are important. So usually. you're saying, so you, you brag in your little blurb there about being able to match the right candidates with the right jobs. How do you how yeah. do you do that? I through, mean, through through a scoring system, the recruiter knows which kind of candidate usually knows. Like uh, otherwise, we just start, start Hold doing on, consulting. Hold on, wait a sec. You're saying yeah. that these are un unskilled laborers, and yeah. they're only spending three minutes filling out a form yeah. online. Yeah, yeah. How, how, to enter how, the basic. On what basis do they screen? Give me an example of how someone is screened. What? Okay, so there's like five questions relevant to a particular job. It can be related to the age. It can be related, for example, to some medical uh, book. If, we, if the person is dealing with food uh, or some other like specifics that are relevant to a particular job and the person answers like yes, no, it, it, the person can answer also an open answer uh, or a, a closed answer like ABC. And uh, after that, the system just scores the, the, the results and the, gives the recruiter like the results. Of what 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 this candidate whether it's he so you can discriminate by you can discriminate by age in 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 your client yes, countries yes okay. yes yes absolutely okay, okay. Michael, so become... so it's basically a, a a screen it's it's a screening system where you can ask like five you said five can there be more of these yeah, screening of questions yeah there, there there can be ten questions. Like uh, the, the screening part is just one part of the feature. There's also like a website that is uh, created based on the uh, automatically based on the information that the recruiter provides. So, like a, uh, a landing page? Hold on. When you say website, do you mean a landing page? Yeah, a career page. Yeah, exactly. With a map with of the all the job positions. Uh, oh, I didn't say that uh, the companies we work with, they have at least 20 uh, outlets within one city, at least if, if they have less, we just we won't be able to bring any value to them. Because we work with companies that have like many, many spots within the Ukraine or many spots within one, one city. Okay, so I remember uh, somebody we know, I won't mention any names, but he became famous for recruiting a bunch of people off of Facebook to work as uh, 
waiters and waitresses or servers at the Hard Rock Cafe. Remember that, Michael G. Cox? Were you around then? Yes. No. Yeah? Yes, I think I know who you're talking about. Okay. And Up in someone Dallas? Who called, someone who called me a terrible, nasty name, uh, yeah. which might be common in England, but sure isn't here, okay? Uh, oh, anyway. I know who you're talking about then. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and so that's I, the kind I don't of... Know anymore. That's the same thing you do, isn't it? Uh, at some point, yeah, at some extent. But he, he also does the attraction part. We do only the pre-screening part. The attraction part is on behalf of the client. So the client chooses uh, wh whether he or she wants to use Facebook ads, whether they want to choose uh, Instagram ads, uh, job sites, offline media like QR codes, and so on. But we, we generate the special link to all uh -huh. these channels. And later on, we also provide the analytics, which, which channel worked and okay. which didn't work. Okay. So you're with, yeah. are, are you catering strictly to the Horeca, Horeca countries or are you uh, trying to break into our markets over yeah. here? Currently, the, currently the people that, we're, the companies we are servicing are retail and logistics. That, that's, that's not a country. Different. Retail is a line so of are you, ah, you're in, trying in to break Ukraine, into the Ukraine, United Ukraine, States. Ukraine. Uh, we tried, but we gave up at in 2019 so i just we called it a day and we're just focusing at the moment in the ukraine to be better like with, within the local market because like you, you have so much uh, restrictions uh we have age to restrictions you can't ask people their age okay lots of restrictions yeah they also ccpa uh different, damn laws uh, <laughs> gdpr <laughs> so on and so no forth. gdpr we don't have that you've got that yeah the, yeah, the central europe does so yeah we're we're uh, we're currently like locally developing so but, if you're uh, talking to people i'm you know you uh, you, you criticized me for talking to the resume civ guy okay <laughs> so now we got the new work guy uh, what's your pitch? I mean, are, are he his? I think his main selling point that it was so cheap, twenty five dollars a month. You want to make a pitch based on uh, on money? I don't think so. Uh, what's your pitch? What's your main uh, value proposition? So people who are listening and nobody in France probably, and nobody in Italy probably, uh, or Hungary or Germany, but just in case, okay? Why Holy should shit. they use Hold, you? Hey, hang on, dude. Um, yeah, that question after, so I'm on your price calculator here. Is yeah. this right? 6,629 us dollars per month? No, that's, uh, you, you, uh, that's Ukrainian, uh, uh currency. Is it in dollars? <laughs> well, it, it says USD. USD? Maybe Sorry USD is Ukrainian. U is for Ukraine, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Ukrainian space dollars, yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. Okay, that's a lot more than $25 a month, okay? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, Your people are, uh, but, but the, there's a huge turnover in the businesses you're um, working yeah, with, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, so our, handling... our, main, our main pitch point here in, in all cases when we speak to the clients is that you will eliminate the need for additional recruiters in your team. Like uh, usually like we think that like th this is a successful case. If there's one at, after uh, like six months, if the company decides to fire one recruiter, we optimize the costs of the in department, uh, recruitment department. So I know it, it may sound, yeah, it may sound offensive, but we're pitching to the business so, owners so, and the know, CEO. Steve, Steve Finkel <laughs> had, a, had a, a, a business development uh, pitch, a gambit before. He, he said, you call the hiring manager and say, listen, Bill or Sally, I want you to think of the recruiters on your team. And usually there's one recruiter, at least, who is not really doing their job. I can't remember his exact words. He says, Amazing. you know, they're slow. <laughs> and uh, he says, I want you to picture that person. If you use my service, that guy's going to be out, okay? Is that how you, you don't need to depend on those losers, yeah. okay? Is that yeah. how you're going to uh, sell this thing? Get rid of your losers? Get rid yeah. of your loser recruiters? Because that's what Fantastic. you just told us, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. Yes, exactly. Okay. There you go, everybody. <laughs> and that was for free. He's not yeah, paying me. Thank you. That was free. It. Get rid of your deadwood recruiters with the modern world, automation in the modern world. Okay. You've also got another business, uh, an HR consultancy yeah. that does yeah. recruiting as well. 
Uh, yeah. Is there something you want to say about that? Or can we actually get into the recruiting question? Since I know now that you have some recruiting experience, I I'll ask you questions. We'll okay. Discuss them. So, yeah, uh, the, the consultancy business, currently we uh, may, are testing a new hypothesis about blue collar work uh, 4.0. What, what could it be? Like fantasizing and stuff. And we think that the blue, uh, my team and I, uh, we think that uh, the blue collar 4.0 is all about data labeling and data annotation. So at the moment, we're uh, trying to. No, find no, 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 no. You've got you've got an A.I. Uh, business. That's not the one I'm talking about. Uh -huh. The business mm -hmm. I'm talking about is. Uh, uh, the, the you pay our staff, a recruitment agency. Oh, that, that to... was ages ago. Yeah, yeah, that was ages ago. Like it's, that. that was I thought it was continued till the... present. Oh, it's not it's till continued, present. but but within the other company, like we we okay, do the that consultancy. AI story. thing, Michael G. Cox. Uh, let's talk about that later. I don't want to talk about AI okay, right now. Okay, you, okay. Let's G. talk Cox? about it. Uh, it, it's uh, most uh, artificial intelligence is actually <laughs> artificial. Okay. Yeah. Blue Especially in the HR no. tech world. You know, I'll prom I promise it will it, it's, become. It, it's more like, you know, setting up if this, then this kind of situations. Okay. All of a sudden, Michael G. Cox is an AI expert. Okay. No, right. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, let's get to the kind that's, of questions. That's actually what Michael G. Cox said. That's actually what I commented to some guy in the recruitment uh, of recruiters online. Recently, okay. there was about the artificial intelligence. That's it's all about the if, then, then. Okay. So, yeah, than... maybe he read it. Okay, but here's the kind of question that not. appeals to me. Okay, do big screens make you smarter? Okay, and in case you think I made it up myself, no, I read a there, uh, there's a a book was written about this kind of stuff, and she pointed pointed everybody to this article. Uh, if you've got a big screen, it allows you to think more clearly. If you've got multiple screens, it allows you to think more clearly. Uh, do you know? Uh, do you know anything about that? Do you have an opinion? I'm uh, absolutely Andy? sure that a big screen makes you look busier and makes you look more serious. That's hey. what I'm sure, 100. percent Okay, so hey. you're negating that, Michael G. Cox. How many <laughs> screens do you have, Michael G. Cox? How many screens? Two, and they're uh, about three feet across. Does it make you smarter? No. <laughs> no. No. It Does it make, make you more smarter. efficient? It's stupid. Does it make you more efficient? No, this yes, actually says- Yes, but that's says, not smarter. It has yeah. nothing to do with- Yeah, yeah. This guy says, rather than investing in a lightning quick processor, we should spend our money on a larger <laughs> monitor or on multiple monitors uh, to be set up. Okay, it says the computer user who makes this choice will most likely be more productive because she invested in the human component of her computer system. It's good for users. Okay, and here's something else. Okay, they're always telling us that gut reactions for de decision-making, they're just biased, they're no good. And yet, researchers have studied financial traders who are, are sensitive to detecting their heartbeat. They make better investments, okay? They call that embodied cognition, okay? You with your PhD over there, okay? You can uh, maybe appreciate this stuff better than us. It's, it's a, the leading edge, uh, which is sort of like back to the future. It's gut reaction. You get a feel in your body for uh, what's right and what's wrong because your body or your unconscious can process stuff a lot faster than your conscious mind. Uh, well, I, do you think that plays a role in, in uh, recruiting uh, Andrew Bass. I got a gut, gut feeling in recruitment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I'm absolutely sure that it matters. Although there's lots of uh, discussions about the biased approach and everything, but I still think that the gut feeling of a recruiter is something special that you cannot do in AI and everything. That th this gut feeling is something people pay for. People can, uh, everybody, uh, recruiters, if you're actually listening this far into the show, okay. There's something you can use. It's called embodied cognition. You've got science on your side now to say, look, I'm not a machine. I'm not Watson, but I've got something special, okay? My supercomputer body that's been uh, evolving for millions of years, I can choose the best candidate with my unconscious and my heartbeat tells me what's right, okay? That's good. You can use that against all these guys who are pushing personality assessments and all those things on you. Michael G. Cox. Is that right? I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Okay. 
do you, you think gut reaction helps you choose a good candidate or is it just a tool of discrimination and bias? Yes. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? It's I'm both. Talking- so gut reaction is very important, but you need to kind of put that on hold and ignore your gut reaction for, for at least a certain time frame, maybe a couple hours, a day, um, because it, there is a lot of bias in that. So ignore that for a bit. Paul, put it on pause for a while and, and don't completely dismiss it, but just try and ignore that gut feeling for a certain period of time and allow for some sort of confirmation through a proper interview to happen. Okay, so you get your gut feeling, but you check everything out rationally against uh, an objective checklist as well, okay? But you know what we were talking about? You might've heard us, a- Andy. Um, I think you wanna work with people you like, okay? And it doesn't mean that they're the exact same yeah. as you, they're just people you like, okay? Uh, and. Uh, it sounds like you agree with me. Am I, you're a founder. Uh, you're a founder, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did you find your your founding partner? Uh, through uh, after you know, uh, I worked uh, at different projects in the university with my future partner, and uh, after we like went to different jobs, like in two years, we met again and we started doing business. So th- this is how. And you enjoy working with this person. I, I know him more than my wife, than my first wife, than my second wife. So I, I know him oh, wait. pretty, pretty long time. No, yeah. no, no, not yet. I'm too young. <laughs> too young for three. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, anyway, so that's, that's the issue. So, okay. We moved on from gut. Let me see what else we got. Okay. Uh, one of the regulars on the Facebook group said he posted why I don't give feedback to candidates. This is a very controversial topic. He says, I used to call every interviewed candidate and provide specific feedback regarding why they weren't selected. He said way too many were unable to accept rejection professionally. Many would ask how they could improve and then argue that they possessed those skills that the interview team found them lacking in. I encountered frequent hostility and condemnation. And so I moved to the canned rejection email supplemented by a follow-up email on specifics when requested. Okay, so uh, I think that's the way of all people. They, they find out that they really, you know, you try to be nice and give an honest answer and you get punished for it. Uh, and so you back away from Aww. <laughs> oh yeah that's the way it is okay suck it up well what do you mean suck it up you want to know what to do michael g cox you want to be kind to these people after they've been rejected and, and it says it's no good to be kind it's cruel to be kind to yourself okay and the uh, michael g cox is too busy fiddling with Damn, this, I, uh, I have like games two, there. two opposite two opposite positions to this it all depends on the situation because i i was on the both both sides like a uh, good person uh, explaining why this decision was made and also as a bad person not giving a damn about uh, what, what what happened to the candidate i think it all depends also on the personality on the biased approach whether i like i don't understand candidate. what you're saying okay are you saying, yes, I have been a recruiter and sometimes I've given them details and sometimes I haven't? Yes, and it depends exactly, on the person. Exactly. Yes. Yes. It depends on the. In well, my how case, do you do that? Do you, do you use your uh, embodied cognition to decide if the candidate <laughs> is, is going to be open to it? You say, yeah, I think uh, this person can handle it. I'll, I'll tell her. Okay. But if you think she's going to be too touchy, You'll just say, you know what? I don't know exactly yeah. why they reject. Yeah, them. yeah, just- yeah. I, I think, I think that's that's the, the case, absolutely. Because like you all see, if if you understand like from the conversation that the person can be very sensitive and so on, then why 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 should you like uh, I don't know hurt his his or her feelings and so on? So yeah. basically, just just the general uh, feedback would be okay. 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 But you can't still busy with your stuff there. Do you have anything? No, you I, 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 I think regardless of how a person is going to react, you should give them the honest feedback and, and, and definitely make sure that the, the decisions that are being made are based upon the qualifications, the requirements of the job. 
Okay, yeah, now I remember. And, and you, you don't and you don't change you that. You don't change your behavior because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. <laughs> Deal with it, dude. It, you're going to hurt somebody's feelings or or they they may take it, you know, personally or they may get upset because they disagree. But you have to let them know, hey, the the interview's over. During the interview, you didn't demonstrate well, this. That's your standard line. You yes, it's okay, a standard okay, line wait, wait, because wait, it wait, works. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, Michael. Okay, let, let's picture this. Uh, we yeah, this had is take a, a case. Go ahead. We we had a case uh, with um, a girl that wanted to go work in the um, uh, re restaurant in the Middle East. So she didn't pass the interview at all. She had uh, very poor English. Uh, and we saw that this, this case is not like going to work out at all. So we explained this to her the day after we have her parents in our office. Then we have like this whole crazy stuff happening in the office and it yep. all just wasted lots of money. Uh, I mean, time and leading to lots of money. And we just like, we freaked out that, 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 uh, in, in this particular situation. I'm just talking about these kinds of cases. It, it, I'm not saying that- And, and do you think, that. and you think not telling that person why they weren't selected and just saying, hey, you weren't selected, we don't know why, would have led to a better outcome? Uh, I think that in that case, uh, something more like general would, would, would be more, more, would be better. I, I don't know. Like that, that, I, I don't that. think it would have been better. And I, frankly, I will never know, but yeah. being more. There's a way. Hold on. Michael G. Cox. Did her father come in and say, my daughter speak perfect English. Is that yeah. what happened? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Exactly. That, there was something clearly uh, wrong with that. Michael G. Cox. <laughs> okay. No, no. So um being more vague is is um obtuse isn't going to make that situation better you I, never I, know I I, it, well this way it didn't work okay and i yeah. see people more and more i'd say 80 or 90 percent of recruiters disagree with you okay don't okay. tell them you that doesn't make me wrong no you're the you're the minority that's right okay that, and that's okay yeah, I'm OK with that. But yeah. it, again, if, if they push back, you say, hey, during the interview, you you weren't ranked above all the others. OK, you know what? At least in the Ukraine, I don't think he's got the worry of uh, someone coming in with a gun like they might down in Texas. Right. Oh, whoa, whoa, we got no, guns no, no, in the no, office, no. We, so don't worry about we, it. We got crazy people here also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> Uh, is it Ivan or Iwan? I, it's I W A N, and he doesn't like it when people spell it I V A N. But that's the way, you know. Look at Andy here. Uh, he, he, his name is Ukrainian. He may he anglicizes it so people like me don't have any problems. But when I see your name, I have to wonder Iwan, Ivan, you know. Anyway, oh, good. do you have something you want to say? Have you been listening? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, he's in uh, Switzerland, uh, uh, Andy. He's over there yes. with you guys. Okay. And okay. he also has a, a tool. He was on the show, but he didn't have it then. <laughs> well, well, tell us, the, what's the, you, he's got an ATS that he said, an applicant tracking system. He says it's great and fast. Just tell us the URL. Clang.so. What does Clang. O stand for? Dot S -O. S -O. It's like actually um, clang. Bing. It's in German. It's like if you drop like a coin, it makes clang. I didn't ask you know? about it's clang. Like, K-L-A-N-G. Like, like... I asked about S-O and forget about it. You had your chance. <laughs> okay. It's okay. a sound. It's a sound that will will happen if you make the commission. You know, it clang. Makes clang. Yeah. Oh, it's that's like the cha ching. No, no, that's the cha ching. That's, yeah, that okay. is cha ching. That so is that? He's that, over is that in still Switzerland. Available? He's in Switzerland. Okay, he's got a Russian name. He grew up in Germany. Now he lives in uh, Switzerland. He's very multicultural. Okay, uh, and this guy uh, is from Ukraine. He went to school in uh, England for a little while. Okay, to polish his <laughs> resume. Uh, uh, wait a second, though, Ivan. What what's your take on what we were just arguing about? I want someone to agree with me. If if your candidate strikes out, 
You tell them, I, I, we, oh, I think you posted something, the exact opposite of what you used to say. Now you say, I don't tell them, they're too immature. But I remember you saying previously on Twitter that you have to give them a full explanation. Yes, I, I as I, uh, yeah, I, gr I grow as a recruiter, you know, I grow with experience. It becomes like, you know, it's, uh, things change, things change. Of course. Okay, so it's, we'll it's, leave it at that. If that's all you want to say, nothing more clear. Okay, 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 okay. It says here, uh, should a person, this is for Andrew, he took the negotiation course. Should a person always attempt to negotiate a salary? Is it a sign of inexperience not to? OK, is that I never heard that before, that if, if you're uh, just they say uh, you give you a hundred thousand and you say, OK, uh, that they think you're stupid. Uh, Andrew, is that. Oh, uh, it depends on the position. If we're talking about middle level, senior level. Yes, I think it's right. It's, it, it should be. It's a must. Uh, actually, it's, it would be very strange if the person doesn't nego negotiate the salary. Uh, if we're talking about entry level, then usually there's some kind of like limit. That are provided. Hold in the on. Are you saying that if you are a, a senior person, okay, a director, I don't know what you could, yeah, a senior yeah, manager, yeah, yeah. Senior, you have to say, no, no, more, because you just assume that they're lowballing you because they want you to, to bid a little higher. And that, that's representing the way you're going to do business. And that's not the way you want them acting once you're in, in the role. Is that what you're saying? I don't know how they do it in Canada to be honest, about the sea level management and everything. But in the Ukraine, it's the a different level is not, something, sea they, level they do is not, something beyond me. OK, I don't know anything okay, about okay, sea level. OK, about, about up, upper management or high, higher middle uh, management. Uh, the Usually in the Ukrainian job description, they do not post the, the salary at all. And it's always a topic for like negotiation and for conversation with the owners and so on. This, this is how it like usually looks like. So in your, it's for, you're saying it, it varies perhaps from culture to culture. In yeah. Where you live, if they make you an offer, you're expected to ask for more money. And that's a sign of your business acumen. Is that what you're saying to me? Yeah. Well, look at the ceiling. The answer's up there. Yeah. Okay. No, I saw you looking. It's not there. Michael G. Cox. Yes, I saw him looking. You're with salespeople, okay? Do you expect them to always negotiate? No, I don't expect anything always, uh, but it happens quite often and it's not seen as a negative. Is it seen as a positive? In some cases, <laughs> yes, it, but it's, again, some, it's not okay, but always. Not a blank, you can't, this I would say said, more often it is something that the client is expecting and prepared for. And uh, you don't see it as a negative if the sales rep doesn't try to negotiate. Okay, so that's the answer. Yeah. Do you have something to add there about programmers, Ivan? I believe it's actually uh, like the way you do it, right? I mean, like if they like, I coach candidates always like say something specific, nice about the job or the company, then ask whatever you want to ask, and then say again something nice about the company, very very specific, such that the company has the feeling. Okay, this guy or oh, this person, they really want to like join, yeah. And then if you like, like if if it works on a human level, you can almost always ask, right? And then it's kind of you can always almost always do it. But I I don't think it's like a. I, sometimes I mean clients say this is the last, so it's really like for us the maximum and stuff. Yeah, sometimes okay. You know what? I, I had to coach the other guest today before. We like examples, okay? So when you say, say something nice about the company uh, and then to say, then say how much money you want. I, I, I remember this guy has, uh, he used to advise people when you criticize someone, use the sandwich technique. Say something nice, say something bad, then say something nice again. I know from experience. I like your shoes. Good. You're pretty stupid. Yeah, it nice doesn't stuff. work. It doesn't work, okay? So now he's telling you to do the same thing with your negotiation. Kiss yeah, the guy's ass, ask for more money than he wants to give you, and then kiss his ass again. But give yeah, me an example. Give me an example okay. of what you're going okay, to say. Like, oh, uh, you've got a wonderful building. I love your office. Oh, yeah. Well, what are you saying there? I love your building. You, I'm sure you That's can afford to pay me even more. Shit. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like a skyscraper. I like skyscraper. So what you, what you told us, you tell these people, you're actually, you know, saying I'm a career coach and this is yeah, how you Use an example it. from the last time you, you sure. shared this advice. 
Um, so I, I was a Java developer and used Spring to like rewrite this thing from like monolith to microservices in the job that I had now. And this is exactly the task you're hiring me for in the next six months. I will so much enjoy this. Please pay me. This is why I think I'm worth $5,000 more. And really, I had a great time talking with Alex about uh, like uh, the you know, new that's design a pretty good answer. Book. Hold on. I didn't see that coming. It's about the job, not about the business. You represented it the first way. You, you tell them uh, uh, before you do it, I, why you think you're a good fit and why you're going to like it. Uh, and then you ask for the money and then you say the same, the same thing again. Uh, this is why I think uh, I was just like I was telling so-and-so. Andy, did you like that? I did. I really liked yeah, it. I loved it. Okay. Were you going to tell us why you grew your hair back? Yeah, actually, I was on a holiday for two weeks. You know why I asked? I remember because Ivan let his hair grow as well. Maybe it's a trend in Europe. Okay, why, why did you let your hair <laughs> No, I, I had a ho holiday off from recruitment and uh, I'm finally back. So I guess this will disappear in a couple of days. Why? I, you, 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 it looks, looks good. You should let it grow even longer, really. Hey, let it grow. Animals got like that rat on his head. Man. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's He's got a hat like this too. I checked. He's in Ukraine. They wear this kind of thing now. Okay. Uh, anybody Rich. else got anybody else got something they want to talk about, or should I just uh, keep going? My dreams coming true. I'm on one show with Rich, with Rosen, oh, Rich Mr. Rosa. Hey, what's oh, my mentor! My mentor! <laughs> my mentor is here. Finally, I meet him live. <laughs> I became so much better. I like literally like the calling stuff, and in the evening, like make all the notes, and then have time to call people. Uh, all I these things, it. I'm so thankful to you. Like, I really, really thought in many, many situations, what would Mr. Rosen do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you would curse at them and yell at them Mr. and tell them they Mr. were wrong. Mr. <laughs> Rosen, Mr. Rosen, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Rosen, that's it right there. <laughs> and Andy, Andy, uh, Rich Rosen is known as a, a super recruiter, a big biller agency, okay? And, uh, and, and and he's got a cult now on, on Facebook. People in every group, there's he's got his worshipers, okay? <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm you not kidding. You just, <laughs> you just heard it, okay? You just heard it, okay? So is if is he a, a di direct, direct competitor of Ben Nader or no? No, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> Yeah, Rich does uh, forklift operators. Well, hold yeah. on a second. Ben Nader, that's an interesting connection because Ben Nader is, is recruiting the same kind of people that Newwork.me uh, is, is targeting, right? The unskilled yeah. labor, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you got him to use a... Uh, Andrew, you should... You should I, I, can, I, can't, I can't reach him out, actually. Ben, if you hear, if you hear me, please answer <laughs> my last messages because we had... Some communication and after that he just disappeared he goes i'm not we telling call, anything we call that ghosting, ghosting now ghosting, ghosting. exactly yes yeah. okay ghosting. let's go to rich though since rich is here rich uh i'm sorry everybody to beat it to death i'm just that kind of person if uh if 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 you've got a candidate he's also got these high-powered sales people for his candidates if someone makes them an offer if they don't come back with a, a counter offer, if they don't try to negotiate, is that seen as a bad sign? Is it is it expected that they have to? No, it's actually completely, it, it costs more candidates. I just had this conversation literally 10 minutes ago. It literally costs people jobs. You know, I mean, I know, I tell the clients, give them your best and final, let's avoid the back and forth. You know, you may get a little bit, but I tell the candidate as well, you know, where do we need to be? What's going to go on? You know, let's not do this because it just, it really just poisons the water a lot of times because people just want to get things done. Let's get them the right offer and avoid the problems. And you just have the conversation on both sides and they, you know, they generally come to terms. I mean, there may be a question. I'm shocked. Okay. I thought if any people wanted to see the, an aggressive candidate, it no, would be tough. your clients. No, no, because you know why? I mean, listen, these guys with all the song and dance, they're trying to, they want to get these things done. They want to get the people for the right price. And, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, and if you're sales guys too, and you're worried about the extra $5,000 in your salary and granted it's money out of my pocket, if it's 5,000 less, but you should be, if you're a smart salesperson, you should be looking at how do I get to my on target earnings the fastest? I want a lower salary with a higher, with a lower quota so I can accelerate as quicker. And that's what you should be doing if you're smart, if you believe in yourself and the product. Okay. Uh, uh, I got to move on. Thank you. 
uh, if, if anybody else wants to ask one question, fine, because he knows more than me. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Okay. I had a question for you, Andrew, and I, it's just skipping me. Okay. Somebody said uh, the, uh, see, you're, it's hard to talk to you about this stuff because you're dealing with uh, people who come and go, right? But I just read today that somebody said the onboarding process is so important. There's my word, okay, Michael G. Cox, is so important uh, in terms of retention. And it's really important for agency recruiters. You should actually, you should actually ask your client, what's your onboarding process? Because you want to make sure that your candidate's going to stay there long enough for you to collect your fee. Okay. And if they do it, they don't have a, a good uh process he may be so self-conscious shame on you okay texas okay <laughs> if they don't have a good process then you're going to get screwed what do you think about that andrew is there is i've yeah, never we, heard of we, a recruiter we, we, asking we, for that we uh, we asked for that as a recruitment agency we asked about an onboarding process because within our terms we have that guarantee uh, change, uh, guarantee um, switch of the candidate or how, how do you call it uh, when, when it's the person just wants to leave the job and the recruitment agency has to give some Reset. other uh, how do you call that uh, guaranteed term or something guarantee that's smart yeah, just yeah. so so we because we have this term within like two to three months depending on the job position uh, we looked at the onboarding process but and, what are you uh, looking for? What are you looking for in the onboarding process? The, the company has to know what uh, KPIs they lean on, what kind of metrics are important for them. If we're talking about the sales, for example, what is it or business development? What do they want? They want calls. They want uh, like some uh, amount of money to be like earned within a certain period of time or something. Is that, is because that not lots onboarding? of people onboarding don't know that. It's acquainting the person with the company. It's sending them pictures of their uh, colleagues and inviting them out for uh, giving. I, and in my, in my understanding, this is giving strict instruction what the person has to do. If there aren't any strict instructions about what, what the person has to do, especially like from the first like two, three, four, five days from the first week, this, yeah. uh, then the, the company will just fail with this candidate and the candidate will most, uh, mostly like high chances okay. of- so your, But your candidates, they don't work at a desk, do they? Uh, because some companies, they got the, the person comes in, there's no desk, there's no office space for them. They, they, they work in a corner on two chairs uh, for two or three weeks or a month, and they're pissed off. Okay. Yeah, Michael yeah, T. That's, Cox, that's do you do that? Do you, do you say, do you ask them about their onboarding process? Yeah, of course. Well, give us, tell, me, tell me how it works. I, I don't know about this. When the, normally, you ask, and if, if they don't know, because you're usually speaking to a hiring manager, then eventually you speak to their HR people, not early. And and uh, have a conversation with them to f see what it's going to look like, and if it's if it's weak, you try and fill in the gaps for them. Have you ever done it? Have you ever done it? <laughs> Taken over the onboarding process? Yeah, tell them, hey, this is stinks. Okay, I don't want to work for nothing. You no, better... so yeah, I'll have a conversation with the hiring manager and say, look, you guys said you wanted to hire somebody, but now HR is saying that they won't. They only hire on Mondays. They only start people on Mondays. Okay. And yeah. due to the holiday, they're not going to be open on the 5th. So we're going to do it on, on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. But didn't you say it's always on Mondays? And, and sometimes That's the process too easy. becomes it's more important too easy than the with outcome. the dates. We're talking about the whole process. Mr. Mr. And Rosen. the dates happen to be part of the process. And sometimes the process becomes <laughs> more important than the, the outcome. The guy in the Ukraine talks like you, not like me, okay? <laughs> Even though he went to school in, in England. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rosen, Mr. Yes. Rosen, do yes. you ask about the onboarding process and then tell them to shape up if it's not right because you don't want to lose your fee? You know, I don't honestly, that I don't all, all that often. And it's, I mean, I probably should, to be honest with you. It's a great question to ask and dig into. Um, you know, my, I, I, I first got to get them over the hurdle of fixing their, because I deal with startups. So it's fixing their hiring process is usually the bigger problem. The onboarding process, I mean, these guys generally know for startups, you're walking into, you know, a, you know, meatball land here where it's not fully vetted out anyway. There's a little training, but they're sales guys. You got to be proactive. And that's what I 
I work. Okay, with so your answer is a, a no. What you work on is the hiring process. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Does, does, does Mr. Rosen look like a bouncer? I feel kind of intimidated. <laughs> like, it's, it's a little too, it's, it's, it's a, a massive too five, six height. <laughs> not of that t-shirt, like he's gonna beat the shit out of me, okay? Thank God I'm on a computer screen and not in, in, in that office. You gotta uh, get even, you gotta get even, shape, man. You gotta hey, get hey, Anil, here's a great example for you in regards to the process. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a guy who signed up with a client Oh my goodness. It was at the end of May and he, he was given his two week notice and they said, well, our next class starts first week in June. So since you're not going to make that class, we're not going to be able to get you started until first week of July. What? And, and now he's waiting an extra six weeks, five weeks In this instead crazy of just two, because we can't get people started except for the first week of the month. And they're, they're, they stand to lose that candidate. And I stand to lose that fee yeah. because our pro process is so important. <laughs> it's ridiculous, dude. Get them started. Get them on. And the hiring yeah. manager is like, well, I don't want, you know, that's an HR thing. I don't want to tell them their business. What? So, so now suddenly their HR, HR, the, their the HR business lady looks partner, like Rich Rosen. Okay, that's why the he's HR scared. business <laughs> partner <laughs> is holding up the business. I'm a little Ivan, upset about this. I won. What about this onboarding? Do you want to contribute? <laughs> yeah, no, contribute? I just, uh, I'm, I'm. Uh, you you're know, busy working. Uh, you're just su su to be suffering, here. suffering together with Michael because this sounds really, really ridiculous. I, that's unbelievable to hear. Yeah, but, it like, is. Really. But it's ridiculous. I, I mean. No, I, I never also like uh, I never I should ask this too. You're absolutely right. But yeah, usually it's about fixing the uh, interview process, which it takes enough work. Uh, onboarding. Did it ever go wrong in the onboard? But I try to stay in touch with the candidate. Like, is it going well and stuff? This this maybe is, is important to do, right? I guess uh, I did. I, I put together a um, uh, first 90 days document to try and help the every candidate that I place to get through their, uh, their their first 90 days. And I did it for when I was internal because sometimes they didn't have enough work to do. They were waiting for training to start. They didn't know what to do to keep them busy. So I gave them like a massive list of here are the things that you need to get done in your first 90 days. And it's about your boss, your role, your success, your 91st day. And it's kind of like a schedule of things to do every week to try and keep them engaged in the new gig. Another time I'm going to ask for details because, uh, yeah, you gave it. It sounds interesting, but I don't know what it, how it plays out in real life. I want to come back to Andrew Bass before uh, we have to close the show. Uh, Andrew, speaking about these guys, they work with the... Uh, hiring uh, process instead of the uh, onboarding process. I saw someone saying their candidates are being subjected to 10 hours of diff of interviews with a, a wide range of uh, people inside the company. And uh, Jerry, um, what's Jerry's last name? The famous- uh, Jerry Crispin. Jerry Crispin, yeah. He said, this is outrageous. He said, we went on and on, okay. Who's uh, Jerry Crispin? I never heard of him either. Okay. <laughs> what, do you, what do you say? Have you ever, see, you're dealing with a different kind of candidate. So maybe it's an, an appropriate question, question. Have you ever had a case where the, the client company is just overdoing it on the interviews? Okay. Oh, uh, it's yeah. The, the, my, my record, my record was, uh, but it, it was uh, Dev, DevOps and IT um, job position. So the case was five interviews. And at the end of the fifth interview, there was also an interview in front of the special thing that uh, calculates the vibration of the person. Uh, it's used to understand whether the person are lying or not. How do you call that? Lie, lie detector. Or what, what, what is that? Yeah. Wow. So, so that, that, that's the record. But still, that's like the, the candidate is working still at that job. So everyone is happy with him. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. That's so crazy. you. You didn't interfere with that, okay? So let's go back. Oh, hey, 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 Cox is back, okay? So let's go back. Let's <laughs> tell everybody. What, let's tell everybody what Andrew Bass does again. His new project, his big project, is called New Work. 
N U W. By the way, you said it right. Project. Projects. N U W O R K dot M E slash E N for English. Okay. It's Newark dot M E and then E N for English. It is a, a website that screens. Um, what, what do we call them? Uh, unskilled entry labor. Job. Yeah, entry level labor. job for unskilled labor, like people who work in the hospitality uh, business as what jobs? Waiter? Uh, waiter, waiter, server, runner, busser. Uh, okay. These, and these kind of you, should, uh, you should make sure and connect. Andrew, you should connect with Jeremy Nichols. He's, he, Jeremy he's Nichols, really yeah. big in that. I'm not sure if you know him. I don't know him. I, I know Jerry uh, Crispin, but Jeremy Nichols, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send Jeremy's uh, LinkedIn profile your way. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, hold it. on a second. You promised on your website. Well, you promised. Let me say it to his, his, his ad. He, he, he complained that the other guy got a whole show on his, his, his tool. So here's the thing. Okay. Hey, this is free. He, yeah. <laughs> he, he claims. He claims. That it cuts down your enter your your uh, screening time by seventy percent. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. told us here that you can fire the loserist, the worst recruiter on your team after you start using his product. Okay. Yeah. He also warned us if you reject somebody, don't tell her exactly why if you don't want her parents with you. I believe they would have showed up the next day anyway. Okay. <laughs> And he's also got a, what's your a recruiting firm, your HR consultant, uh, see, what's the URL? Yeah, well, what's like uh, everything uh, is fo focused on the people to AI and everything around it. Uh, what? The, what? The, peop the people to AI, yes, on this legal entity, it also does the HR well, consulting. Tell us, the, tell us so we can understand people, it. You... People to AI.com. Tom, this yeah. is uh, what uh, our HR consulting transformed into. This is the provision of Blue Collar Works 4.0 data labeling, data annotation for AI companies heading straight away. <laughs> I should have, you know, I should have interviewed you for more about Fair that. <laughs> Maybe you would have taught someone, uh, but no one would have listened. Uh, yeah. Rich Rosen, anything you want to say before we uh, sign off? No, man, I'm, I'm just happy I got on at the end here. Yeah, yeah. yeah cornerstonesearch.com. Am I right? You're right. Yeah. You're Michael right. G. Cox, the sales recruiter.com. You can tell how smart he is. Okay. And uh, <laughs> all the way from Switzerland, programmer come uh, recruiter come. Uh, he Now he's created his own uh, ATS, which he said is faster than anybody else's. He doesn't give a price out. Oh, that's something I wanted to talk about. No time today. Okay. About pricing. But it's Clang. Check it out. K L A N G dot S O S O. Okay. He's what is the S O thing? What? Didn't I ask that? He doesn't answer. Okay. It's <laughs> short. It's short. That's why. It's like two letters. Uh, I, I, saw, I saw this. It looked pretty cool. I, I'm going to check it out. It looked pretty cool, actually. It's, it's short. Yeah, I want like Rich. I would, as you know, like I'm a big fan, so like I value everything you tell yeah. me, and we'll do exactly what you You're tell me. You're embarrassing me, okay? It was funny for a while, it, but I definitely want to uh, check it out. Though it looks good. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, I have to say, Rich does let everybody know that he's on the Forbes list of uh, a special recruit, <laughs> big billers, and he's a member of the uh, what's the Pelican Club or something. Yeah, the like Pelican that? Club, yes, <laughs> Pinnacle. Pinnacle's <laughs> <is Pinnacle. laughs> <laughs> Andrew Bass, B A S. I can't remember Baskakov. Thank you. Come back another Thank time. You.